episode of Seven Eight Crooks Watch is sponsored by Frickers Inkers Retire. With New Center 7, your election, and your eclipse station, we are less than two weeks from the big day. And we're not the only ones with a countdown. Dayton emergency crews are working on plans to make sure they are ready as well. They're preparing for the possibility of hundreds of thousands of visitors. New Center 7's Mike Campbell sat in on today's briefing with city leaders. People have to realize that April 8th is not going to be just like any other day. Um, significant increase in traffic to the area is anticipated. Brett French says information and education will help Eclipse Day stay smooth and safe. The fire department is upstaffing, making it easier to handle potential emergencies in all four corners of the city, even if there are traffic tie-ups. Simple medical call will take a longer to get to the hospital. The fire department put together a presentation for city commissioners about the eclipse and why it will impact Dayton so heavily. They said the last total eclipse in Ohio was 1806, and the next one is scheduled for 2099, making this truly a once-in-a-lifetime event. Then, 70% of the U.S. population is within eight hours or a one-day drive of Dayton. It's why they expect a potential of one million visitors in the greater Dayton region, and that will place big problems for traffic and for communication. If you've ever been in a really crowded situation and uh, everybody tries to make a phone call at the same time or something like that or send a, a message, sometimes that can get a little bogged down. Could be. I think a lot of things could happen. <laughs> like they say the dogs, you can't take your dog outside. Be careful. Lisa Erdl is already making plans to stay safe, avoid traffic, and be with loved ones. I am going to take half a day off work so that I don't get in the I-75 traffic, and I'm going to the nursing home where my dad is and view the eclipse with him. The city is urging people to plan their viewing spots. All three city recreation centers are holding watch events. They're also urging people to use parks and green spaces and warning everyone not to park alongside or on any roadways. It's not going to be like every other day, like a typical Monday, um, ha having a whole lot of patients that day. Mike Campbell, New Center 7. Fire department leaders here talked with Nashville leaders about how they handled the 2017 eclipse there. After the eclipse ended, cars backed up almost 35 miles on highways there in Tennessee. Tennessee estimated it had 7 million extra travelers on the road that day. Right here in the Miami Valley, the eclipse starts a little before 2 o'clock. And then the moon will completely cover the sun just a little after 3 o'clock, and it will all be over right around 4.30. I want you to count on News Center 7 and our eclipse coverage here on television and on WHIO.com. For our latest plans and coverage, check out Total Eclipse 2024. That's at the top of our homepage. At Great American Ballpark, opening day is so close fans can taste it. Tomorrow's opening day is with the Washington Nationals coming to Cincy. Fans who go to the game have plenty of food to choose from. Today, New Center 7 got a peek at the menu. From Skyline Chili Nachos to Brisket Hoagies, people will not go hungry. There's also the Loaded Bases Burger. It has two patties, jalapenos, and a Red's hat full of nacho cheese. Be sure to watch New Center 7's Daybreak tomorrow morning. New Center 7's Xavier Hershovitz will have live coverage from Great American Ballpark. They'll be up and at it early. Daybreak gets going at 425. <coughs> And Storm Center 7 weather specialist Nick Dunn joins us. And again, lots of people wanting to get down to the game tomorrow. It's an afternoon, late afternoon start. Thoughts when it comes to what folks need to prepare for weather-wise? Yeah, the good news is, despite the fact that since 1994, you've had down to those 29 opening days, 12 of those have featured rain. Well, we're not going to worry about that tomorrow in Cincinnati. They do have an opening day parade gets going right around the noontime hour tomorrow. Upper 40s to around 50, so take the jacket. We're not looking at anything overly windy, but certainly plenty of sunshine and a few clouds. 56 there at first pitch at 410, and as the game concludes, they're right around 52 degrees, and again, plenty of sunshine expected out there across the Miami Valley. Let's take you outside now this evening to the Dayton area. As you can see, we give you a live look outside. Clear skies, dry roads, traffic moving very well at this hour, but certainly a bit on the cool side for us with those clear skies. Now, if you joined us during our 90 minutes of news, we had some clouds. Those are all gone now. We've dropped to 36 degrees, a light northwest wind at 7. That's giving us a feels-like temperature of right around 30. So as the kids get up and going tomorrow morning, I know a lot of us are on spring break, but definitely maybe want to think about bundling up just a little bit. 34 right now in Troy, 36 right now in Dayton, 32 in Bell Fountain. Wapakoneta and Springboro have dropped below the freezing mark, and everybody else will be joining them here within the next few hours as well. Out the door tomorrow morning. I know, again, maybe a lot of us are on spring break, but if you have any plans tomorrow, Again, a bit of a cold start, but we rebound quite nicely into the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies for much of the day. A few clouds starting to move in late, 
but we go from the upper 20s to right around 30 in the morning up into the middle 50s for the afternoon, which is a little bit closer to where we should be for this time of the year. Now, let's get into future cast because we've got some changes on the way as we get later into the week. We'd start you off with Friday morning. We do see a few sprinkles possible, nothing major, maybe just enough to kind of coat the pavement, if you will. And then we get into Saturday. We start to see some bigger changes here, showers and a few thunderstorms. Again, not looking at severe weather here, but certainly some pockets of heavy rain possible. And then we get into Easter Sunday. The current run of future cast indicates that maybe areas south of I-70 getting a shower late in the day, but I really think most of us for Easter Sunday are looking dry. As we get into Monday, we start a really soggy pattern. Here's Monday morning, showers, and there could be a couple of thunderstorms with this as well. That continues right into Tuesday as well. And uh, you can just see an overall really soggy pattern shaping up for us across the Miami Valley. Still a lot of uncertainties with this overall setup in terms of where we're going to see severe weather or anything like that. Still several days away to kind of iron out some of those details. But I do want to share with you how much rain we could see, emphasizing the word on could there. As we get through Sunday, you could see maybe, again, half of an inch or so. And again, we should take these numbers right now with kind of a grain of salt as we get through next week. But the potential is there for one to two inches of rain. And some spots could get more than that. We'll have to wait and see how each of those rounds of rain sets up for us across the area. Tomorrow, looking at your small town forecast, 51 in Neptune, 53 in Enon, and we'll make it up to about 54 down there in Preble County in the community of Camden. Your Storm Center seven-day forecast shows that unsettled pattern this weekend into next week, but James, hopefully this time next week, we start to dry out a little bit, temperatures back in the 50s once again. All right, sir, thank you. Too many cars are catching fire, and there are not enough parts to fix them. We